Minecraft wood is so important for building. Using different kinds of trees and their leaves can make your base or your builds pop. But getting lots of that wood can be a real grind. I'm gonna show you how to farm all of the tree types without redstone or any complex farms and massively reduce that Minecraft grind. Hello everyone, do you want some wood? I'm gonna show you how to farm all these wood and leaf blocks reliably in early game with zero redstone. I'm gonna give you a simple, no redstone tree farm designs that will give you all of these wood types, plus all of these leaf types, plus all of the drops that come with them, and I'm gonna tell you how to get all of them, and by that I mean what are the best tools to use and what enchantments to get the best drops. So let's crack on with the first one. Farm one is as simple as it gets, but it works for four of the five single sapling trees. Well, actually it works for six of them as well, but we're gonna talk about the other one later. And that is the oak, the birch, the spruce, and also the single stem jungle. I've got these trees four blocks apart, and that's because we wanna make the most of their leaves. This farm is for when you want wood and also leaves from these plants. And you can mix up your trees, or you can have them all for the same type, depending on what your needs are. I've got these set up in a grid pattern with a jack-o'-lantern between each one, which means they'll work both at night time and also during the day. Trees need a light level of 10 or more to grow, so these jack-o'-lanterns, and you could use torches as well, will give light during the night time, meaning you get growth at night as well as the day. Now this farm will give you as many trees as you plant up. You can see I've already got a couple of spruce trees going in the background there, but you can just go about your business, do whatever it is you want to do, and come back and chop out all of your trees in a single place. Now, the best tools for this farm are going to be an Unbreaking 3 Efficiency 5 axe. You could put mending on it, but you won't get any XP from this farm, so you have to mend it elsewhere. If you want to get the leaves, you want Unbreaking 3 shears, and if you want to get the drops from these, things like apples or maybe sticks, etc., then you want Unbreaking 3 and Looting 3 on a hoe. And that loot in three is especially important for jungle trees because you get a much lower drop rate for saplings, meaning that there's a chance you won't get as many saplings back as you use up, which will mean you have to go all the way back to the jungle to be able to get more saplings. It's been about four minutes and we've already got a number of trees grown. And obviously, if you've got bone meal, you can speed this fella up by bone milling all of your saplings and cutting them down straight away. I've planted my saplings on coarse dirt. All that means is that I can see exactly where they go when I chop them down because the coarse dirt won't won't turn into grass when I cut them down. Farm 2 is more space efficient for wood, but you get fewer leaves. But it does still work for those four main sapling types. Although you've got to be a little bit more careful with two of them, and I'll show you what I mean in a minute. For oak and also birch, all you need to do is just line up the saplings right next to each other like this. Just keep on banging them out. They can be in a big old block right the way through the middle as well. And then they'll just grow. Make sure that you've got a light around them to help them grow in the night time, although the middle ones will stop growing if the outer ones grow first. So this one works really well with bone meal. If you just start bone mealing these saplings, they will grow. Go next to it as well, grow the next one. That will grow up with enough bone meal. And don't worry if it pushes you into crouch like that. You can just keep going whilst you are crawling it along on the ground. Although your mates might laugh at you if they see you like this. Eventually, you'll end up with a solid block of wood which you can just come in and chop right out with your ax that's got efficiency five on it. Again, because this is the fastest way to get the wood out. I recommend efficiency five and I'm breaking three exactly the same way as you did the last farm. Now remember, you're gonna get far, far fewer leaves with this one because the oak trunks are gonna replace the leaves when they grow next to the previous tree. But doing it like this is gonna get you loads and loads of wood. This slab platform is placed above all of those saplings, seven blocks up. That's gonna stop any of the oak trees forming into the large oak trees, which are much harder to mine out. Unless, of course, you want the large oak trees, in which case, don't put a roof on it, it's fine. Now, that's great for oak and birch, but jungle and spruce, you've got to do something slightly different. Then, plant your spruce or jungle saplings in a single row like that. Reason is because if you plant them in blocks of four or bigger, they're gonna grow into a giant spruce tree or jungle tree, and that comes later. You can then bone mill up your saplings in exactly the same way as you did previously. Make sure you've got access, just break a few leads if you need to and they will grow into a solid block of trees. Once you've done an entire row and not before, come around the outside and grow a second row by placing the saplings in next to them like that and then popping in a little bit more bone mill. Farm three has a light grid pattern just like this. I'm using jack-o'-lanterns, but you could use torches or 
any other light block for that matter, and I'm placing one down and then moving forwards two and going across one, forwards two and across one, just like a knight moves in chess, which will give you this grid pattern. And you can then place saplings wherever there isn't a light block. And you can mix this up with the four saplings that we've used in the previous farms. Now you'll notice this is probably very similar to the solid block one we did last time. However, the big difference here is this light will mean that there is always light for every sapling and it will grow at night time as well as daytime and you get better yields for your farm if you're not using bone meal. The next one is a two typer and it is for giant trees. Now, if you're wanting to grow either giant spruce or dark oak, then you can use this slightly smaller design. We have got a block of four coarse dirts there separated with four blocks works exactly the same way with the dark oak sapling as well the reason we separate it with four blocks is that means that we're going to get the majority of the leaves from these drops because remember when you're building you cannot have too many bushes you can let these grow naturally or you can bone meal them in exactly the same way as you do the smaller trees but when you get these trees growing up you'll notice you get a lot more wood and a lot more leaves. You can see there that the leaves don't overlap each other too much. So as a result, you get as much leaf as you, as you possibly can. Now, because of the way giant jungle trees grow, you are gonna need an eight block gap between each of these four stubs. This will allow room for the canopy and everything for these different shaped jungle trees to grow. And also you get all of those lovely vines growing off of them. Now, the tools you want to be able to get these trees are exactly the same as the previous one, but then you've got the vines as well, and you're gonna want some shears to get those. Now, your next farm isn't really for wood, it's for leaves, because azalea wood is just oak wood. We just want the leaves, thank you. Now, you can use flowering azalea or normal azalea bushes here, which you can get from lush caves or from moss farms, but these won't grow without bone meal. They won't grow naturally as a result. They'll stay bushes unless you give them a hand. So make sure you've got yourself a bone meal farm. And because we are only interested in the leaves, we need to make sure we have got an eight block gap between our bushes because these fellas can lean a little bit. Look at that fella, he's really leaning a lot. And if I blew him as well, they have leaned into each other, but fortunately, their two joins are exactly where they're there. You can see it come out for that direction and this come for that direction. We haven't lost a single leaf. So they do take up quite a lot of space, but you get loads of these awesome leaves with them. And as a result, you are gonna need some shears or a netherite hoe that has got silk touch on it to make the most of all these leaves, which will give you some really attractive bushes for your world. Plus, of course, you can chop the oak out as well. The next farming area doesn't just give you wood and leaves, it gives you beehives, yep. Yeah. This is a beehive farm, but strictly speaking, it is also a wood farm, so it counts. I've got coarse dirt in a four by five grid, meaning there's 20 coarse dirt within this area. Next to each one, I have got a jack-o'-lantern. You could use a torch if you wanted to. If you use a torch, dig it down rather than have it next to it. And then in a hole next to the other side, we have got a flower. It doesn't matter what flower you use, as long as it's a one high flower, a dandelion, a poppy, anything like that. I am then going to place myself an oak tree sapling. You can also use birch if you wish. And I'm gonna put one on each of these coarse dirts. The reason I use coarse dirt is because it won't be changed into dirt, which means it won't change into grass, which means I know exactly where I need to plant my next one when I've chopped them down. And once I've done that, I'm gonna wait for these to grow, or I could bone meal them up, it's entirely up to me. Now, statistically, if you grow up trees next to a flower just like that from a sapling, you have a one in 20 chance, that is a 5% chance of getting a beehive grow on that tree with three bees inside it, which is why I've got a grid here of 20 trees. Now, sometimes you might get unlucky and not get a single one. I got, I think, two, so I did quite well out of that one. And you can just knock these fellas off. Now, the best way to do that is at nighttime when the bees are inside and make sure that you use an ax with silk touch. If you don't use silk touch on this, you are gonna lose the hive. And make sure that you pop a campfire underneath that bee's nest. Otherwise, when you knock it out, it only takes one go with an efficiency five ax, you're gonna end up with a load of angry bees and they will sting you a lot and then they will die. That would have been a waste of time now, wouldn't it? Farm seven has coarse dirt blocks, eight blocks apart. And that's because this one is for mangrove trees. And mangrove trees are really weird. They've got so many different shapes, you need them quite spread out. 
place a mangrove propagule on each of these coarse dirts. Don't worry if it doesn't go in the center. Propagules are a little bit like flowers. They don't go in the center. And when they grow up, you'll get mangrove trees. And those mangrove trees will have minimal overlap. You can actually put these 10 blocks apart to make sure you get no overlap whatsoever. But eight should be enough so as you save a little bit of space. You see what I mean? These mangrove trees spread massively, but you do get, again, vines and lots and lots of propagules growing off of that. You don't have to wait for the leaves to decompose. The propagules are there waiting for you. And also you've got roots and also moss carpet to be able to get out of all of these. So make sure you've got yourself a pair of shears. And farm eight is for our nether woods. You are gonna need either two crimson nylium or two warped nylium, depending on which tree it is you wanna grow. If you want crimson wood, you need the crimson nylium, and if you want warped wood, you need the warped nylium. Now put your fungus on one of the two nyliums. Don't put it on both, and then use a bone meal. That was lucky, it went first time. You are gonna get that crimson tree. That's fantastic, you've got all kinds of different blocks there. If I do it to the warped one as well, took a couple, but it grew up nevertheless. Now underneath the bottom block of the trunk, it is eventually gonna change into netherite. You can see that one already has that one has as well. Now, as a result of that, you can't replant that fungus, but if you get yourself a bit of bone mill and hit it on there, that is as a result of this being next to it, gonna grow back into the nylium, which is why you have two nylium next to each other. Ready for the next fungus. You will need an ax to chop out the wooden stem of these trees. However, you're gonna want your hoe to take out all of these blocks, including these shroom lights, which are absolutely brilliant, I love them. And then you're gonna need some shears to take out these weeping vines. You tend not to get twisting vines off of these. And there you have a very different, very simple, no redstone tree farms that will get you lots of leaves, lots of wood of every single tree variety. And you'll be able to get loads of wood and massively reduce the grind in your Minecraft world. If you've got any other ideas for a no redstone, really simple Minecraft tree farm, let me know in the comments below. I'd be really, really interested. But in the meantime, I'll look forward to seeing you in another video. You take it easy now. Bye.